In the midst of a global conflict in 1944, a young woman welcomed the baby boy into the world in the heart of Hungary's capital, Budapest. She couldn't have known back then that this boy would one day be considered one of the greatest inventors of the human species. The little boy was named after his father, Erno Rubik. Since his childhood, he was always fascinated by puzzles and problem solving. He developed his passion for design and architecture by studying at the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. This educational background would later influence his approach to inventing the Rubik's Cube. In the early 1970s, Rubik began working as a professor of architecture at the Budapest College of Applied Arts. It was during this time that he created what would eventually become the Rubik's Cube. There was a special course that I was lecturing, what we called form studies. Form studies uh, meant uh, to create different forms and shapes without a special function. The initial idea for the Rubik's Cube emerged as Rubik was exploring the concept of a movable object with interconnected parts that could turn without falling apart. He wanted to create a puzzle for his students that would help them understand spatial reasoning and problem-solving skills. In 1974, he created the first prototype, which consisted of smaller wooden cubes held together by paper clips. Once he assembled the prototype, he put stickers of different colors on each side of the cube to help him navigate the puzzle. When he was done, he looked at the object that would change his life forever. I recognize the possibilities of the movement and at the same time I recognize how difficult to, to go back. Rubik immediately mixed up the cube and discovered that its movements were incredibly complex, leading to an immense amount of combinations. As it was later discovered, the amount of combinations of the Rubik's Cube is over 43 quintillion. That's number 43 and 18 digits behind it. The human brain isn't very good at working with giant numbers, so I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you turn the cube every second and each turn would put the cube in a different state. You would have to be turning the cube from the beginning of the universe until now and you still wouldn't get even 1% of all possible combinations on the cube. It's kinda hard to believe that the cubic object of 26 pieces can be modified into all these combinations just by turning the layers. So yes, Rubik's invention was bigger than he could possibly comprehend at the time. But let's get back to his story. He realized that solving the puzzle required strategic thinking and a deep understanding of its mechanism. Rubik himself struggled to solve his creation at first, spending weeks trying to restore the cube to its original position. The knowledge that you can find now on the internet in connection how to do it, how to solve the cube, uh, tremendous. So it's, uh, nowadays it's much more easy to work it out because you can help. For me, there was no help. Would you dare to guess how long it took Rubik to solve his own invention? One month. This experience gave Rubik valuable insights into the level of difficulty and potential enjoyment that the puzzle could provide to others. He named his invention the Magic Cube. It wasn't until 1980, after it was licensed and renamed the Rubik's Cube, that it gained worldwide popularity. The Rubik's Cube became a global phenomenon, captivating millions with its challenging yet addictive nature. People of all ages and backgrounds embraced the cube as a symbol of high intellect. Almost no one could solve it though, and if anyone could, they were considered a genius. 23 years later, in 2003, thanks to the Rubik's Cube, new sport was born, speed cubing. The concept of this sport is simple, solve the cube as fast as possible. Since then, competitions in speed cubing started to take place all over the world. Every week, there's a new record broken, and logically the biggest buzz is always around the 3x3 cube. That's how speed cubers call the standard Rubik's Cube. Because there's a plethora of different shapes and sizes nowadays, such as 2x2 all the way up to 7x7 cube, pyramid, or megamix. Today, you can attend the speed cubing competition in 199 countries around the world, organized by the WCA, World Cube Association. The cube is no longer just a puzzle. It's a tool that brings together people with the same skills, patience, determination, and passion. 
To this day, it is estimated that more than 450 million Rubik's Cubes have been sold. And that's just the original Rubik's Cube brand. If we include dollar store knockoffs and speed cubes, that number could quite likely crack the 1 billion mark. Despite the immense success of the Rubik's Cube, Erno Rubik remains a humble and curious soul. He believes that puzzles are more than just entertainment. They are tools for unlocking the potential of our minds and encouraging a deeper understanding of the world around us. Erno Rubik's invention revolutionized the puzzle industry and continues to fascinate and inspire individuals of all ages to this day. The Rubik's Cube stands as a testament to Rubik's ingenuity and passion for exploring the three-dimensional puzzles. And what about you? Would you dare to solve it? This episode took me over 60 hours to produce, so if you appreciate this type of content, please like the video and hit that subscribe button to join the QB squad. If you wanna buy speed cubes with a juicy discount, use code uncubable at cubos.com. For those wishing to back my channel financially, you can easily scan these PayPal or Bitcoin QR codes. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.